Okay, everybody, so welcome back to the world's worst fishing well. It's up there somewhere. And uh, today, we have a very, very exciting video. It's something completely new to this channel. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited to get started. I've only had one test run with it, and it was really awesome. So, uh, we've all seen the dual injector, right? The twin injector, made famous by Bass Tackle. You know, these are regarded as the best injector systems in the hand injection uh, market, and I would definitely uh, have to agree. So, we've all seen the twin injector, dual injector. Now we're taking it a step further. Yes, this is real, it's not a joke. This is the triple injector, and it does exactly what you think it does. It allows you to shoot three layer laminates or three layer swirls. So we're gonna play around with this thing today. I would say one of the keys to this is heat. You need your plastic really hot. You need the blending block probably preheated. I think that's a smart move. And you need some elbow grease, you know? It definitely takes a little bit of uh, muscle to, to push this thing. But uh, you know, my order came with some um, oil for this. You can use worm oil, you can use whatever your favorite lubricant is really. Um, so definitely keep it well lubricated and I think you'll have some fun results. What I found out during my first test run with this is that if you can handle just the, the regular twin injector, the dual injector, if you are competent with that and have mastered it, there's no learning curve really for this. This did not require any new, um, in, in any new special process or anything like that to get good results. I got awesome results my first time and we're actually gonna replicate that color now. It's a three color, obviously, crawfish pattern and uh, we're gonna run it in various molds. So uh, let's get started. Okay, so every triple injector needs a triple blending block. Yes, that's right. So, um, something that they've done, which, you know, before I actually saw the inside of this block, I figured they had to do something like this. But if we look at it, we'll see that these two are a traditional blending block. Just the plastic has a long way to travel. So there again, heat is key because if you have a cold blending block with plastic that is, that is at a low temperature, it's, it's gonna set up on its journey here and not only here, but definitely not work in your mold. But you can see this middle color in order for the plastic to have sort of the same length, right? The same path, so to speak, so that they meet evenly. It's where you don't get way too much of one color. You can see they've just kind of done a little sidestep here and thrown a little curve in there. Okay, I am excited, let's go. So, it's gonna be a yellow, blue, and orange crawl pattern, okay? So, little sunshine yellow right there. And uh, we're pretty much using all dead-on plastics uh, colorants today too. So, obviously we're using their plastisol, but we're also going to use their colorants. So we're just gonna dump some in there. And then, let's see, the middle color is going to be blue. I'm just still rocking this little sampler here. Some dead-on plastics blue. All right, let's add that in. And then the bottom color is going to be our orange. I love the dead-on plastics orange. I use that stuff in just about everything. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and stir in each respective color and just kind of get a gauge on how thick it is, if it's uh, too see-through, if it's too opaque, etc. So, you know, you, you look at these three colors right here by themselves and it's, it's super bright, you know, like this, you would think this would look like a clown's costume, you know, but um, I think what, what, what really gives it a natural vibe is the next part. We're mixing brown in with these, all except the blue actually. So the brown is obviously gonna darken them up, but it's gonna dull the saturation of each color, which is going to make it, in part, 
more natural in my opinion. Oop, that cap is coming off. That's not good. All right, so we're gonna brown that up a little bit. Brown this one up a little bit and just kind of see where we are. Oh yeah. Now that immediately looks more like a natural crawfish orange. It's not, there again, clown costume orange. Same with this yellow. It's actually a little bit too much brown. So we'll yellow it back up. At least hopefully we can, yeah. You know, so we have a little bit more natural colors going on here and that's key to it. And then we're obviously going to add a little bit of texture with some flake. So here we go with the flake. And again, we're, we're actually keeping this very simple. It's just a lot involved because it's three colors. You know, you have to keep three cups of plastic at temperature and build three colors that work well together. You know, that to me, that's the learning curve is we're all used to just managing one or two colors at a time. If, if you're a serious hand pourer like I am, then yeah, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll manage three cups, but not necessarily all at once. You're not using all three cups simultaneously whenever you're doing a hand pour. You might be pouring a three or five layer, four layer hand pour, but each cup doesn't have to be ready right all at once. So basically what I'm getting at is to me, this is the hard part, not using the actual um, actual tool. So now what we're gonna do is uh, a little trick that I like is just to kind of drizzle out a little bit of each color on the table and just see how they interact with one another. See if one's way too strong. And what I mean by that is the opaqueness. Yeah, so zoom in there. That's actually looking very good and natural. I might brighten up the yellow side a little bit more. Other than that, simple color, and uh, we're gonna go with that. All right, it's game time. We got them mixed up. They're all scorching hot. We uh, blasted that with the torch real quick, the blending block, just to uh, get it kind of heated up. And uh, wish me luck, you guys. There again, still really new at this, but uh, I think we can get something that'll work. Let's go. So far, so good. Definitely take some elbow grease. Super smooth injections so far though. Okay. I think we got everything. We may have run out of plastic actually on that last mold. So I'm not sure there. There again, whenever you have a new injector and new molds, not, not that these molds are new, but whenever you have new molds or new injectors, you will kind of figure out what the capacities are. So um, yeah, that, was, uh, that, that felt really good. Except for that last mold there, I think we'll have some, uh, some really cool looking stuff to show you guys that has never before been seen on this channel. All right, let's show you what's in this crazy blending block here, which is super hot. Like I said, I preheated it. Yeah, check that out. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Let's take a look there. Really, really awesome. I thought that was kind of a, a, a cool little frame right there. In fact, you know what? That's thumbnail. That's, that, that's thumbnail right there. We're gonna snap a thumbnail picture. And uh, if that right there doesn't uh, say it all, then no other picture will. Okay, first ever run with the triple injector on the channel. Join me in a drum roll, please. Okie doke. 
Let's see how we did. Oh yes, baby, yes. All right, let me straighten them out to an extent. Look at that. If you didn't know that these were triple injected, you'd be like, now how is he getting this yellow, brown, orange, and blue? You know, how are they getting all that in there? Yeah, that's that triple injector. So, if you look at the sprue there, or the runner, there it is. Now, if I can get it to focus. Yeah, check that out. You wouldn't think that that little blue strip actually uh, would, would be very visible in the bait, but it sure is. So, look at that. And I love how, sort of like the Angling AI C-Block, they, they're all a little bit different, right? So, if we look at this one in particular, it got some more blue in, in the claw tips there. You know, this one did not. It got a little bit more of the yellow. You know, this one, this one had orange with just barely blue claw tips. I mean, look at how realistic that is to what we were trying to achieve. And this could also be a great bluegill color. You could make this in a frog. You could make this in a jerk bait. Um, any, you know, a, a little swim bait for a jig trailer. Anything that you wanted um, is, is pretty much possible um, if you have the patience to, to do the triple injector. All right, now let's take a look at these punch bugs. This mold always laminates really well. It, uh, it just, it blends the colors together really well. So this should also do well in a triple setting. And yes, it did. Oh man. Yeah. Take a look at that. Look at it from the side. You can very clearly see there's our yellow, blue, and orange. Look at this. Just look at this madness. Those are all the same baits. Oh. Just, just look at some of the blending that's happening in those claws and extremities there. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, you know, this sort of thing isn't for everyone, but uh, those of you who, um, want to take your injection colors to the next level. You know, it's, it's definitely something to uh, consider. So there's a couple other companies I know um, just from talking to people in the industry that are working on triple injectors. So, you know, it might be something that you can get your hands on um, with a little more regularity coming soon. But uh, yeah, there it is in the Angling AI Punch Bug. And uh, I'm super, super, super stoked. All right, now let's look at these grass grenades. This is the mold that actually filled. Oh, yes. Look at this, you guys. Guys and gals. And again, if you want to nitpick how it comes out, obviously, the more even you can get your temperatures, obviously, the better. I kind of like a little bit of variation, though. Uh, there are no straight lines in nature. So um, that right there is looking, I mean, just look at it from the side, you know. You, you can see how it blends the three layers together, but the key word there is blend. It's not just perfect layers like you would get if you were hand pouring like an open pour. It's a blend, you know, therefore, therefore it's, it's going to mix the colors a little bit more. So look at this. Oh, oh man, I love it. And of course, you know, if you want to make a color similar to this, you know, Tweak it however you want to get the result that you want, but yeah, nice even laminate there. And, and that's what I like is that this didn't require really any new learning curve. Um, you know, I, I thought it would I thought it would be like really difficult. And um, you know, obviously I still have a lot to learn. There's probably still a lot of triple colors that would give me the fits that you know you need to be more precise with. But if you just want to get great triple layered results, triple laminate results, you know, I, I found out real quick, you can do it your very first time. And uh, I'm loving it so far. Okay, let's build some color. So again, like I said, I'm going to do a shad color and I was going to try to do something completely new, but I said, nah, I'm going to do a color that I at least know that I'm familiar with. 
um, since this is all sort of still a new experience. So we're gonna do a version of my green color shift shad. So you'll see I have some dip your car products going on. So the bottom color is going to be Nordic. The middle color is just going to be Luder Works Gold, just some regular gold pearl. No fancy uh, space age pigment there. And then one that's on here a lot, ZTG, which is one of the hyper shifts. And uh, being that this is gonna be a shad color, you know, I, I wanna thank open pour swim bait mold when, when I'm building this. And by that, I mean, I want a lot of transparency. I don't want, I don't want too much saturation, um, which won't make it look as natural. Again, most small bait fish are relatively see-through. So this is actually going to be the bottom color. <clears throat> I'm going to be running these in the Angling AI five inch um, jerk bait mold. So I know that when my molds are set up in this way with the uh, sprue openings facing me, that the top half of the mold, um, excuse me, the left side of the mold is, is the top side. So I need to arrange my colors as such. I want my top, middle, and bottom colors to enter the molds in this order. So my bottom color is way over here on the right. Beautiful, beautiful. That Nordic stuff is, uh, is just lovely. And then my, what would be normally my little vein color, which hopefully will still be that, <laughs> is gonna be rocking center, center field there. All right, so that's just plain gold. So, yeah, that's, you get the picture. I'm not gonna burn up too much camera time doing all the stirring, but you know, these powders do require a very thorough stirring. They, they have a tendency to clump up, but that's just part of the game. And then the ZTG here is going on top. And uh, any of you guys and gals at home that have some of these color shifts, uh, I don't need to tell you how next level they look, especially in person. So yeah, this is, that's starting to look familiar right there. This is a winning uh, combination in my book to get a great shad pattern. So uh, anyway, we are going to prepare these. And by that, I mean, we're gonna finish stirring and then we're gonna heat them back up um, to where they are workable temperature. And uh, hopefully this works. Okay, and all three just came back out of the microwave there. So there's our Nordic there. Awesome, awesome. Gold and then our uh, green color shift over there. So um, if you'll notice, I'm not using my temp gun. I'm not exactly too concerned with getting these to perfect temperatures. And I'm kind of doing that on purpose as an experiment for myself. I kind of want to know what I can get away with with this triple injector. How precise does this stuff need to be? Or can you simply just heat them all up? Just kind of look at them. Okay, that's about the same. You know, how much forgiveness is there? What can I get away with? Um, or does this have to be exactly precise? Does this need to be within five degrees of, of this one and this one, et cetera? Um, so I'm really kind of curious to learn. So, you know, if I don't have to be as precise, I'm not going to be because why go to the extra work? So we're going to fire these off just like they are and see what happens. All right. I know we're way out again, but here we go. Oh, hold on. Got to find my, uh, lefty glove. Okay. We're really going to do it this time. One down. I'll be curious if the saturation is enough, if, if, if the colors are thick enough that you can actually see the layers.
Alrighty, let's hope that worked. Okay, so here is the blending block, and uh, I really like what I'm seeing there as far as color saturation. It looks like it's enough that you can see the distinction between the three colors, but they're uh, not too thick, so I'm hoping that that bodes well for the uh, actual end result. All right, let's go. Let's see how they did. Come on, get, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, you guys. They look amazing. I'm just gonna go ahead and take them off. Look at this, oh my God. Look at that. Have you ever seen an injected jerk bait? quite like that oh my okay well a couple things learned here um, I did not check or particularly make a big fuss over getting them to exact temperatures you know I just kind of relied on feel and um, that thing injects so well that I mean those those are pretty much flawless so Wow, I, I am super happy about that, you know, because an asymmetrical bait, like a jerk bait, like a swim bait in an injection setting, doesn't always laminate perfectly with two colors, but this just did it dang near flawlessly with three. And uh, I don't have to tell you guys, that's freaking special. That's, that's a game changer right there. Okay, there's the whole lot of them right there. Just look at that. Oh my gosh. Guys, we've, we've, we've had some fun times on this channel. We've done some incredible things. We've seen a lot of cool stuff. This is absolute top five for me. That right there. Wow. Absolutely incredible. We're gonna do another run of these. Okay, and here is that second round. They are all looking absolutely fantastic. So we'll uh, take them off the runners here. That's so satisfying. That, this right here, oh, best feeling ever. There it is. Awesome, awesome. Now we're gonna take a look at everything. Okay, everyone, here is the spread. Oh my gosh. So cool. And you know, this, these are all colors that, you know, until this video were impossible for me to achieve in these particular injection molds. You know, you can, you can sort of do this thing, uh, this sort of blending and hand pouring you can take a single injector and pour three colors in it and swirl it you can do all sorts of things to blend three different colors in injection but not a true laminate you could never get this right here in that mold without something like the triple injector so um, really really excited to have another tool in the toolbox that opens up so many new color combinations and possibilities and so many molds that until now i've been limited to two colors um, for for running laminates so um, super super cool um, i hope you guys and gals have enjoyed uh, seeing something brand new on the channel uh, you know we'll be doing lots more with the triple injector uh, you know because eventually we're going to get into swirls and you know just imagine milking the cow with three colors so uh you know everyone always um talks about the uh stickworm color called sweet potato pie it's a three color swirl so we'll uh we'll definitely do some video on that coming uh in the future now that we have the tool to do so okay everybody i hope you all enjoyed that as much as i did this is so much fun you know anytime you expand your collection whether it be injectors molds 
new types of pigments, um, anything that allows you to do something that you previously um, did not have the materials or capability to do is always exciting. So um, this is one of those times. I'm uh, I, I'm absolutely blown away. There's, I mean, if I think about all the color combinations I've ever done that involved two color laminates, now I can literally go back and have to redo all of those. Right? This this literally opens up a third dimension to color creation in an injection setting, um, particularly where you want to do a three color laminate. Like I said, you can get three different colors into an injection mold all day long, but doing it this way is only possible with a triple injector. So, um, wow, still lots to learn. That's what we love about this hobby. Any type of lure making or, or really any art any any um in any craft you know like i've been a drummer my whole life i'll never play everything there is to play on the drums mostly because i don't have the ability to but even if i did you can just never learn at all so same with this stuff i hope you guys enjoyed today's video please shoot me comments down below let me know which ones were your favorite did you like sort of the uh, orange yellow blue crawfish pattern the most or did you like the uh triple green color shift shad injected jerk baits the most so if i had to pick i would personally go with the jerk baits um, simply because i've never been able to get a three layer injected jerk bait like that you know i can i can get three layers to blend together in a, in a crawfish bait and it'll look cool it won't look like that like it's not going to look that good but um that jerk bait really blew me away so that's enough babbling. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll catch you next time.